Quem tem uma empresa sabe quanto tempo é valioso. Por isso, a Pets Brasil apoia empresas brasileiras que querem exportar seus produtos, atrair investimentos estrangeiros ou empreender no exterior. Com a Pets Brasil, as empresas brasileiras têm um apoio estratégico para mandar seus produtos e serviços para fora do país de uma forma inteligente e segura. Com métodos inovadores, parcerias, soluções inteligentes, visão de mercado, conteúdos estratégicos e muita qualificação. A Apex Brasil é referência na promoção de exportações, internacionalização de empresas e atração de investimentos estrangeiros. A agência também atua de forma coordenada com atores públicos e privados em setores estratégicos, tanto para o desenvolvimento da competitividade das empresas quanto para o fortalecimento da economia brasileira. Se é conexão com o mundo de oportunidades no mercado internacional que a sua empresa procura, é o apoio da Apex Brasil que ela precisa. Acesse o mundo. Acesse Apex Brasil.
Quem tem uma empresa sabe quanto tempo é valioso. Por isso, a Pets Brasil apoia empresas brasileiras que querem exportar seus produtos, atrair investimentos estrangeiros ou empreender no exterior. Com a Apex Brasil, as empresas brasileiras têm um apoio estratégico para mandar seus produtos e serviços para fora do país de uma forma inteligente e segura. Com métodos inovadores, parcerias, soluções inteligentes, visão de mercado, conteúdos estratégicos e muita qualificação. A Apex Brasil é referência na promoção de exportações, internacionalização de empresas e atração de investimentos estrangeiros. A agência também atua de forma coordenada com atores públicos e privados em setores estratégicos, tanto para o desenvolvimento da competitividade das empresas quanto para o fortalecimento da economia brasileira. Se é conexão com o mundo de oportunidades no mercado internacional que a sua empresa procura, é o apoio da Apex Brasil que ela precisa. Acesse o mundo. Acesse a Apex Brasil. Good afternoon, I'm Glaucia Souza, coordinator of FAPESP Bioenergy Program, BioN. Thank you for being with us today here. Uh, can I have the first slide, please? The idea of this uh, webinar is to present the next day, decade plans of uh, the program. Next. Uh, we have here with us uh, Professor Rubens Maciel, 
professor Luiz Augusto Horta Nogueira, professor Heitor Cantarella and Luiz Cassinelli, all members of the BioN Coordination Committee. This event is cause of much celebration for us here. BioN is starting a new decade and we worked very hard to organize a solid set of next steps. I thank all the hands and neurons that participated in this effort, including fellow colleague coordinators, the scientific director of APESP, Professor Luis Mello, and the previous director, Professor Carlos Henrique de Brito Cruz. Next. Uh, I'll describe the goals of the program for research related to the biomass division. Rubens will follow talking about biofuels technologies and biorefineries. Orta will speak about end use, Heitor about sustainability, and Cassinelli about opportunities for research in small businesses. I understand we have many students joining us here, and I think it will be good for you to have a sense of how to start your own business following on your research uh, results and new ideas. Well, I'd like to start by saying that bioenergy research is a vast area. So we have a disclaimer here. Uh, bioenergy spreads throughout at least 20 areas of knowledge at FAPESP. So the best we can do in the context of a webinar is to give you some broad strokes the vision of the forest other than the trees, and stress that if we fail to address some aspect or other, it is, does not mean we are excluding it from the plants. But uh, before we start, I'll give a brief introduction on the status of bioenergy and its importance. importance. Uh, next, bioenergy is essential globally if we want transition to a sustainable energy matrix without fossil fuels. Bioenergy is also considered essential for a world below two degrees. Bioenergy can be leveraged in efforts that aim at sustainable development, helping organize knowledge and establish priorities. As a rising global market, it's bringing partnerships opportunities, a neat is, and it is an area in acceleration with many countries passing mandates, regulations, certifications, and an increasing number of industries getting involved. Next. It's important to note that the observed gains in efficiency and our ability to work with many different biomass options are expanding the economic, environmental, and social value. We need more research on analyzing the extent of the benefits since they impinge on so many factors of our societies. They are there, but we need the data, we need the numbers. This is an important uh, point here. And I have to observe the growing interest in new forms of bioenergy, including lignocellulosic ethanol, green diesel, aviation, maritime biofuels, and more recently, renewable hydrogen. We are also seeing new byproducts, new biomaterials, not just substitutions. We have new, new products coming that are derived from biomass. This is under development and the transformation of refineries in biorefineries is also considered an important fact uh, considering the immense infrastructure and the funds we have in the world for oil refining. Next. Bioenergy has been a landmark for the state of Sao Paulo development. Sao Paulo has the capacity, it has the infrastructure, it has the people to develop technologies along the whole chain. We have mature institutions that can support this. And we have FAPESP. FAPESP articulated many important initiatives in this field. We are at a point where a certain critical mass has been reached, where one thing leads to another, 
And at least in this field, we have quite a lot of synergy between industry and universities working together to innovate. Uh, but uh, next. Bioenergy has undoubtedly contributed to Brazil's largely renewable energy matrix. Uh, I think it's uh, next. Yes, thank you. Uh, Bioenergy has uh, undoubtedly contributed to Brazil's largely renewable energy matrix. No country with a population of more than 60 million people has an energy matrix with more than 40% of renewables. We have a liquid fuel matrix of 50.2% ethanol, an all-time record announced last year. This is no small feat. With 43% renewables, we are more than twice the global average. We have a potential to generate bioelectricity, which is huge. Being an agricultural country, there is over a billion tons of agricultural residues we could use. And we have new le legislation in place to use waste for energy. So we are with many more options of biomass to develop uh, in this country. With Bagas, we are making 17% of our electricity already. All of this has been achieved with using not a, a lot of land, 7% of our agricultural land, with avoided emissions in 20 years that correspond to 4 billion trees. Next. If we continue this trajectory of substitution of fossil fuels with biomass, Sao Paulo could be negative emissions. There are several advantages of biomass over other resources, and it can be used to combine with other resources. Biomass can be stored it uses local resources, it can use existing infrastructure, it can bring wealth to rural regions, and it is compatible with electric cars that can make the use of bioenergy even more efficient. All of these vehicle models on the bottom of the slide are already in production or being commercialized. We go from 257 grams of CO2 equivalent per kilometer using a gasoline vehicle to 122 in a hybrid running on gasoline to 117 in a car running on 100% ethanol to 92 in the case of the EU electric vehicles to 59 of a hybrid that can use ethanol and 29 in an electric car with fuel cells that can use ethanol much better than the plugins. A lot of potential to improve uh, our fleet in the way of a more sustainable fleet. Next. Well, back to the Buy One program. Here are the cross-cutting issues that we would like to pursue in the next decade. Increase biomass yields, develop efficient and competitive biomass conversion platforms, improve energy efficiency and sustainability of end use, accelerate the transition to a bioeconomy. We want to broaden and diversify. Next. We will continue to work on reinforcing ties with the industry and scientific institutions. Next, for example, with the organization every three years of the Brazilian Bioenergy Science and Technology Conference, BBEST, which we organize since 2011 and which gathers researchers, policymakers, mm -hmm. government and non-government organization, organizations, so many students, postdocs, it's a very lively meeting. Next. BioN has an internal agenda to organize conferences, 
workshops, work groups, activities for knowledge dissemination and calls for projects. We have a market agenda to seek partners and fund initiatives in small businesses or with large companies, such as the programs of technology innovation and programs in small business, the PPZ, the large centers for uh, uh, engineering research. We have an international agenda. We are currently giving support to Scope, IPCC, Renova Bio, and we have a policy agenda where we work with the IA Bioenergy Task Force, the Biofuture Platform, and GBEP. Next. Since 2009, we have funded 305 research projects, 188 startup companies, and 711 fellowships. A lot of the results you can find today in the video posters being presented by 498 researchers from 98 institutions during this virtual conference and next May in the hybrid Be Best Biofuture Conference that we are planning. Next. And now I'd like to go quickly over the specific goals of the biomass division of the BioN program. Next. The idea is to increase and diversify both on the biomass end and the final products. We seek research that can lead to improved yields of many feedstocks. We want bioenergy, bioproducts and carbon capture. We want to understand what are the mechanics that underline efficient use of resources and future climate resilience. We want to address drought, stresses, and use of nitrogen. Note that there are many areas that must come together for us to achieve these goals. This is very ambitious. We need biotechnology, breeding, genomics, metabolic engineering, and genetics, for instance. We have a large community that is already working on these fronts and many collaborators in many countries across the globe. Next. The same is true if we want to address the agronomical restrictions. We have we have to combine agronomy, biophysics, biochemistry, hydrology, ecology, economics, and so on. We have uh, 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 some very interesting results that say that if we ex expand bioenergy into pasture lands, there is many there are many gains on the sustainability front. So we need more more research on that. But it is a long list uh, uh, that we we uh, wish uh, that we hope you can uh, uh, um, later on look in our website. We are going to publish uh, the whole plan. Next, uh, this is just to illustrate to summarize what I've been meaning. Uh, the current low yields of many crops of interest for bioenergy bioenergy illustrate these points. We are currently, if you look at the right uh, bar, the, the bar on the right, we are currently working to prevent losses, dealing with the agronomic constraints. That's why we have lower yields than we would like. We need to address the environmental constraints. And if, if we want to, to reach the expected potential, which is much, much larger for many crops that we are growing, we uh, uh, need to change plant physiology, architecture, crop characteristics, which is what the breeding programs are doing. We need to bring them more tools to towards this end. We are now approaching the point of being able to perhaps increase our expe expectations of how far we can go with genetics. We have now genome sequence. We can potentially edit these genomes. We have systems and synthetic biology approaches on the underway. We, we, we believe that we will see even further 
increases in, in yields in the next decade. So with that, I finish. We have now to discuss the research expected for the other divisions of the BioN program. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all for being here. I'm here with our colleague coordinators of the BioN program, Professor Rubens, Luis Horta, Luis Fernando Cassinelli, and Heitor Cantarella. I'd like to give the word to Professor Rubens, who will speak about the goals of the bi uh, Biofuels Technologies Division and biorefineries. Biofuels uh, are an important part of the BioN program, and the, we would like now to point out some of, uh, of the advances and the activities that you have in the program. Next slide, please. Next one. So uh, some specific goals of biofuels cover a, a very uh, broad range of activities. Once you have several types of biofuels, one for light vehicles like as ethanol and the biobutanol, and the heavy fuels cars as uh, 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 powered by diesel sickle engines. Then we have biodiesel co-processing and the additives for using of ethanol as a, a fuel for biodiesel engines. We have hydrogen uh, uh, as a fuel and, and the, in this case the ethanol can be a hydrogen carrier to avoid uh, high pressure tanks in the cars so onboard technologies to use uh, 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 production of hydrogen in the cars. You have biofuels and marine fuels as well. Next one, please. So with this very broad range of uh, biofuels, and the, our focus is to increase the biofuel production in terms of process development and the process improvement. Brazil is a top country in the biofuel production, and the, the most important example is ethanol. Even that it's a very well consolidated process, there is a window of opportunities to improve the process, either to reduce the cost or to increase the, the potential for the use of biomass. And then we can expand this idea to biodiesel too, and to work with uh, biofuels as jet fuel, marine fuel as well. The point is, to improve the productivity of the, the uh, biofuel production, we have to take into account the importance of the biomass use because it is the feedstock of the process to produce biofuels. And then a large, broad uh, number of options uh, are at our hands to, to use the conversion process. And the feedstock are increasingly always increase the, the, the amount of opportunities. So we have in Brazilian case, eucalyptus, sugarcane, soya bean, uh, agricultural residues, and even municipal waste residues. So, uh, and then it's quite important to take into account the whole production process, some kind of system integrations in such way that production, conversion, and the use of biomass can be made in a quite reasonable way to decrease the cost and to increase the productivity of the process itself. Among the old the, the, uh, options, the densification of biomass is a quite an important topic because it means that you can uh, transport, you have a, a, a supply chain much more uh, clever in clever ways to use well the biomass and to impact the costs and the sustainability costs of the whole system. Also, storage plays a quite important role once you have to increase the expansion or to increase the operation period of the, the plants. And then in the case of sugarcane, for instance, we are running nowadays with about 200 days a, a year. And then there is a lot of options to improve the process itself, not only by 
day by day operation, but also increase the, the, the period of the operation of these plants. The pre processing, including uh, technical economic evaluation, is a quite important point that you have to take into account the whole process. Once we are talking about it, the, uh, the, the conversion itself depends on the, the quality of the whole material, the feedstock, and this comes from the, the agricultural point of view, but you have to do some pre-processing before using it, and they also transport it. So, pelleting, torrefaction, drying, for instance, are some of these possible operations that you may use to include as a prep processing activity. And then you have to do the tech economic evaluation to bring it in the, uh, to have some idea and to bring it to the knowledge how much does it cost compared to the uh, with another options. So that's a quite important point. Once the biomass itself is responsible and the logistical of it is more or less 70% of the total total cost in average of the biofuels. Process flexibility for wood biomass in the moisture is also a hot topic. Why? Because this is, means that you may use more than one feedstock and then with different process conditions to run the plant and to obtain the product to match the specification, but using a large option of the possible feedstock. And then we have a specific points as a micro reactor catalyst and downstream processing that separation. That's quite important, for instance, when you are talking about using ethanol as a hydrogen carrier on onboard technology to provide hydrogen for fuel cells and the, and the electrification of light cars or to have good cars. That's a point that is going to be covered in the next part of end use of the bioend product. Next slide, please. With the, all this that I have mentioned, the general methodology of the, the evaluation takes into account the technical evaluation as well as the life cycle analysis and the social impact of the whole process. This whole process means then that you have to collect your biomass as a agriculture site and then you have to do a pre-processing that's the next uh, uh, part of the process in which you have one intermediate product that can uh, be used for uh, the industrial part of the process to produce the biofuels itself, or it can be sold to an art company to produce the biofuels. So that's the part of the process. And then when it comes to, to be used in the industrial side, you have a large, uh, again, possible options that can be used. And then you have to do tech and economic evaluation and sustainability analysis to see what is the best or the most appropriate uh, conversion technology for that special crop or for that special feedstock that you have or a mystery of this feedstock that can be, for instance, uh, sugarcane, baggage, but then stove, corn stove, and so on. And then we have to match this uh, industrial process with the quality of the product that the society requires to use as a biofuel, for instance. And then you have flammability points, uh, vapor pressure, and a lot of uh, octane index, a lot of index that you have to, to match to attain the requirements. And then the, the, the interesting point about that is that you have to, again, to rethink about it, which is the best feedstock, which is the best conversion technology that I can use to match all these points that I have mentioned. Next slide, please. And then this comes to the biorefinery. Another topic of the bioend problem that's quite important and it's complete in some way the biofuels sector of the program, as it is in the oil industries. Next one, please. And then uh, the biorefinery itself has the intention of focusing on development efficient and competitive biomass conversion platforms to produce high value chemicals as well as conventional chemicals. 
And then we are together to advance biofuels technology to bioproducts or bio-based products that can be used for the for the food processing as polymer or chemicals. So technologies for carbon sequestration and use of carbon, that means that the carbon is not only to be sequestrated, but also is going to be a feedstock for our process. And then we have several conventional platforms that can be can talk together, can be used together to enhance the possibilities and the, the conversion technologies and the cost and the final uh, end of the product to match the specification. We have to think about plants, algae, microorganisms all together sometimes to develop a process that can attend or can, let's say, match some specifications for a specific use like in the health area. And then sugar conversion, syn gas conversion, methane use, biofuels, hydrogen, polymers, chemicals, building block acids, building block molecules, all of them are part of the, the investigations that becomes the biorefinery a broader world of opportunity to better use the biomass to advance in terms of uh, new chemicals and new products to attend the society. To reduce a technology uncertainty for industrial applications, for sure, one point that makes the research very attractive and needed to the development of the country, of the, and the society itself. Next, please. And then, I just to summarize some of these two next slides, the, the biochemical platform and the uh, what you say, thermochemical platform. Biochemical platform will use the pretreatment to the hydrolysis and go to the fermentation to get your bioproducts. That is the, we call the second generation bio, biochemical road. And in the, in the thermochemical platform, you do gasification uh, and then clean up the gas and go to catalytic conversion, for instance, to go to the bioproducts. And then there is a possibility to have a hybrid uh, approach in which you can use the gasification to go straight away to fermentation higher than to go to the conversion catalytically. And then this is together, of course, the first generation that is sugar extract from, for instance, sugar cane or sugar rich crops go to the fermentation. And then there is also the thermocatalytic road in which you can use thermo plus catalytic to convert biomass in useful chemicals. Next one, please. Just to, to summarize them, we have a large options to do the myobars conversion to get to the first generation that they put in the first line. And then you go to the second generation that is already on in Brazil. We have two or three plants already running uh, using the sugarcane baguettes as feedstock. We have the gasification that opens a large bunch of options using with the syn gas production, and then you go to fissure traps and the uh, correlated process to go to produce biofuels and biochemicals. You go to the, let's say, production of bio oil that is, it allows you to do the co-processing and the, or further process using thermocatalytic uh, roads to produce or to use these bio oils as feedstock or biofuels and the bio-based products. You have the gasification also that is possible to do this lots of things. We have the uh, biogas generation that can go to methane and then you do methane to other products. And then before it is, you can sometimes, uh, depend on the biomass, do the uh, pre-extraction, extract some valuable products there of that and then later on go to the uh, large options of the conversion technology. Transit certification, I didn't put in the, in the diagram, but it's just mentioned there. And certification for biodiesel production is also very intense in the biofuels uh, area, but also in the biorefinery to uh, give it, add values to the fatty acids and to provide maybe uh, some materials for the food and the, for the cosmetic area. So, uh, Biofuels and the biorefinery, they are together uh, in terms of the process and the process improvement with focusing on the better use of the biomass and to take advantage that Brazil has a very strong agribusiness 
action, and then we have technology to provide or to add value to this, this uh, agro-based agro product. Next, please. That's the end for the biofuels and the biorefinery section. Thank you very much, Rubens. Uh, I would like to invite now Professor Orta to talk about the goals of the division of end use. Thanks, Glaucia. Let's to, to talk about the final stage of the bioenergy chain from the solar energy towards the final use. Next slide, please. As you know, uh, we have at least three stages. No? First one is the production of biomass from solar radiation by the photosynthesis process. The second one is the conversion of the biomass as a feedstock in several different types of technologies to produce energy carriers. And the third stage, the last one, is the end use when these energy carriers is converted in some kind of movement, light, power, it depends what you need. Okay, the next slide, please. So, the specific goals that we think that are the priorities to push the development of sustainable bioenergy will be uh, presented briefly in the next slides. The next slide, please. So, uh, it's interesting to recognize that there are different, different, very different technologies to use biomass to produce some kind of final use. Sometimes using the same equipment, sometimes needing some adaptation, new technologies. We, I am going to, to present the main alternatives uh, in five uh, lines of uh, uh, technology you know, development. The first one is the biofuel application internal combustion genes. Using the conventional, conventional technology uh, in the motors, there are a lot of possibilities to improve the use of bioenergy. The second one is the ethanol application in electrical vehicles. There is a rising number of alternatives in this case. The third one is the sustainable aviation biofuels or fuels based on biomass. It's interesting also to comment what could be our uh, priority on that. The third, the fourth one is the marine and, uh, and stationary application of biofuels. And the last one is the power production, electricity production using bioenergy. So the next slide, please. So uh, it's, it's interesting to, to mention, to stress that sometimes appear that the internal combustion gene is in the end of this era. Now it's time of the electric motor. It's not absolutely true because chemical energy in fuels is an important source of energy and will remain in use for many decades ahead. So we think that at least four lines should be considered. The improvement of auto cyclers in giants and engines uh, for ethanol, the case of the variable uh, compression ratio is the Nissan uh, model. Uh, this picture is showing is a very interesting option to take more energy from ethanol due to the advantages of ethanol compared with other uh, hydrocarbons such as gasoline. So it's possible using compression variation uh, to this. The second uh, model in this picture is the model developed uh, by Fiat Chrysler Automotive and it will be in the market in the forthcoming years. It's very interesting also using electrical compression. It's a, it starts with a Brazilian patent and it is uh, now uh, to be produced, planned to be produced in the next, next years, also recovering more energy per uh, energy content in the ethanol compared with gasoline. So uh, there are uh, examples of this kind of new technology that should be improved and promoted. So uh, the second one is the advanced flexible fuel engines that are able to burn both 
as you know, the flex fuel are able to burn gasoline and ethanol. And this is the case of this FCA E4 uh, is more for ethanol, but the Nissan variable compression is able to burn different kinds of fuels and using the high octane number of ethanol compared with gasoline. The, the, the third and the fourth one are related to diesel engines. There are possibilities to use ethanol in the diesel engines. There are experience, there are some projects in that. And also considering improvements, specifically dealing with the proper features and characteristics and specifications of biodiesel and HVO. Next slide, please. Here we have uh, the concepts more associated to use of ethanol in electric vehicles. As you know, electric vehicles are vehicles that are moved using electric motors driving the wheels. It's not necessarily connected to the grid. You are using batteries. For instance, in the hybrid vehicles, you can use uh, engines to produce electricity associated with battery to, to improve efficiency. But it's the case of the Toyota Corolla, which is in production since last year in Brazil, and with good result, with, it is the most efficient vehicle in terms of emission reduction. This level, about 20 grams of CO2 per kilometer, is the lowest among all uh, cars available today. They are using, in this technology, the lowest emission fuel, which is the ethanol, associated to the most efficient cycle, which is the hybrid cycle. But there are other opportunities as using ethanol to you produce hydrogen. Hydrogen has a lot of advantage compared with electricity from the grid. But hydrogen can be produced from electricity using the uh, electrolysis of water or by ethanol catalytic reform that could be an interesting opportunity and as is shown in this graph in many cases it is more competitive it's still more interesting to produce ethanol from produce hydrogen from ethanol no this uh, car below is the mirai from toyota is an interesting model that are prepared to use hydrogen but in this case hydrogen from the uh, gas station we can produce ethanol in uh, produce hydrogen in the car. The next slide, please. It will help me to show you what I mean. Uh, here you have two ways to supply hydrogen to cars, to mobility. The first one are using a kind of uh, fuel cell move using hydrogen, but this hydrogen is produced on board by this scheme, the catalytic reform of, of ethanol. No? And the second one is the uh, Hytron, is a Brazilian startup company uh, that are able to produce hydrogen from ethanol in stationary units and compress it for use in vehicles. So, and there is, there is also a third, a third uh, option, which is the direct ethanol fuel cells, electrical vehicles that are uh, in the study and development we think that is an interesting option and should be promoted and should be studied and should be assessed. The next slide, please. This, is, this next slide, uh, next is, is missing the, oh, here. Okay, thanks. It's about the application of biofuels in aviation. It, it's interesting, maybe it's not so, uh, acknowledged by the people, the fact that uh, we are using ethanol in airplanes in the, since the 80s in Brazil. There are 10,000 and more airplanes, smart planes, agricultural airplanes using ethanol. But now there is a growing interest in more wide application in jet fuel. It's the called sustainable aviation fuels made by biomass. And there is already a specification. This is considered a drop-in that could be used in blended with 
a jet fuel, the regular jet fuel without problems. The process are already certified. And there is an international agreement, the CORSIA, which is the Carbon Offsetting and Reduction Scheme for International Aviation, which is in place, progressively advancing. And it is very interesting to pursue, to go towards development and the diffusion and the impacts and the consequences of this. It is an interesting topic for studies in a country as Brazil, for instance. You know? We have a large uh, territory. There are many uh, applications of this. And the third one, the next one, please, which is the marine, marine and stationary applications of biofuels. It, it is interesting. It is a new frontier. The fuels used in this kind of case typically are diesel or low quality fuels, but due to some environmental constraints and restrictions, there is a growing interest and opportunity that should be developed and promoted to use biofuels in this kind of application. The next one, please. This uh, slide is the last application, the most, the last but not least application of bio mass. It is the application for power production. We have a lot of different materials. Typically, they are byproducts from agroindustry, refuse, municipal residues that could be used to produce powers in competitive conditions with good and important environmental consequences. And in the case of some uh, landfill biogas, the case of using the residues of uh, sugarcane processing the case of vinas, the case, the case of different materials, and the, the, the pulp and paper industry, but not, also, not only using residues, also using dedicated production of forestry and biomass to produce power. In Brazil nowadays, we have the same capacity that you have in Itaipu, our biggest done uh, for hydropower production. We have a 15, 40, 400, a megawatts, 15,400 15, megawatts, which means about 90% of the Brazilian capacity. The same approach could be used in other tropical countries with similar conditions to Brazil. So they have a large potential still untapped to be uh, developed. So those are our uh, opportunities, a wide set of opportunities to use the bioenergy to supply energy at the final use needs. Thanks. Thank you, Orta. It was uh, very interesting to see so many options available and in development. I'd like to now uh, give the word to uh, Professor Heitor Cantarella that will discuss the sustainability division goals. Thank you, Glaucia. Uh, today, we are going to talk about sustainability and impacts uh, in the context of the transition to a uh, bioeconomy. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the, in the first 10 years of uh, BioN, we focused on uh, bioenergy, and now we are going to focus on bioenergy and the bioeconomy. It's a broader uh, scope. Uh, the transition from fossil energy in economy uh, to uh, bioeconomy has already started in several countries, uh, including in Brazil. Sustainability is a key aspect of uh, this uh, transition because uh, we need reliable and proven and verifiable indicators of sustainability uh, to uh, folk, uh, foster the bioeconomy. Next slide, please. Well, uh, sustainability has three pillars, uh, economic, social and environmental. And uh, let's start with the uh, economic uh, pillar of uh, sustainability. Uh, to have good technological solutions is not enough. Bioenergy and bioproducts must be economical. So the BioN program stimulates uh, 
uh, studies in economic sustainability, including economic models, modeling technologies, changes, uh, financing mechanism, infrastructure, markets, including uh, not only national market, but international market, uh, political links needed to mar uh, for markets, uh, regulatory frameworks for sustainability. This is in the national context. For instance, uh, Hanover Bill is a good example. And also we have to pay attention also in the international standards. And the inter interdependencies in the economical materials, energy and economic areas. Uh, therefore, uh, Economy is a very important uh, pillar in the sustainability uh, of uh, bioenergy. Next slide, please. Well, the second pillar of sustainability is the social pillar. Uh, any new or expanding activity has social implications, negative or positive. And this is not different from uh, with the bioeconomy. Uh, Therefore, uh, the BioM program uh, stimulates research in social sciences, including uh, sustainability issues, uh, jobs and new skills. We need uh, data on job creation, job equality, gender equality and diversity uh, in the context of uh, bioenergy and the bioeconomy. Uh, we need also data on advances on, of uh, industry in agriculture 4.0 and how this will affect uh, job creation, job quality and qualification. Uh, education resources is an important uh, aspect as well. And we need uh, investigations also in policies, both national and uh, regional, and also in governance. And I must uh, take a, make a point here that uh, at BOAN, we lack scientists working on social sciences and issues uh, relating to bioenergy and the bioeconomy. Therefore, BioN wants to stimulate and attract new talents in this area to uh, work in the BioN program. Next slide, please. The uh, third pillar is the environmental. Uh, I'd say that this is the most important subject uh, internationally because uh, of concerns with global warming, deforestation, loss of biodiversity. Uh, because of these issues, we must keep a close look at all environmental aspects of bioenergy and the bioeconomy. Therefore, the BioN program is stimulating uh, research on uh, land, uh, land use change. Uh, land use change is a key international uh, subject in sustainability of bioenergy uh, because we have to see how the expansion of uh, biofuels and uh, feedstock production, crops uh, and other, other biomasses affect other land uses, uh, ecosystem services, biodiversity, uh, etc. So uh, life cycle analysis of uh, biofuels and uh, bioproducts is uh, fundamental uh, to uh, tackle these uh, environmental issues. Uh, we must have environmental uh, sustainability indicators. Uh, we must pay attention to water quality and quantity, biodiversity, uh, both the short and long term uh, effects. Uh, air quality, and I'd like to point out here also soil quality and soil sea storage. Uh, there's more carbon stored in the soil than in the air, and we see what, all the consequences of a small changes uh, in uh, CO2 concentration in atmosphere, and there's much more carbon in the soil. So uh, when we play with the soil, we change uh, land use change, we may have uh, effect increasing the amounts of CO2 uh, sent to the atmosphere as well as the amount of CO2 that will be absorbed by the soil, retained by the soil. So the soils are both sources and sink of CO2. And uh, so we need uh, research in this area to see how we can use the soil appropriately to increase production and at the same time uh, store carbon. The uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, also of interest in the BioM program is investigation on uh, CO2 emission associated with co-products and byproducts, uh, nitroxide emission in bioenergy system. And then here again, I'd like to uh, call attention to this point. Uh, about 30 to 50% of the greenhouse gas emitted to produce ethanol in Brazil, for instance, comes from the use of nitrogen fertilizer. For each kilogram of nitrogen applied in the field, 10 kilograms of CO2 equivalent uh, are emitted. Therefore, measurements of greenhouse gases and uh, ways uh, to improve fertilization practices are of great importance to reduce the impact uh, of uh, fertilization on uh, bioenergy and bioproducts uh, in general. We want to stimulate also research on global land uh, data and monitoring systems, developing agroecological uh, chains and local distribution system, uh, and also integrated uh, bioenergy systems uh, for forests, agroforests. Uh, as forest products are very important feedstocks for both bioenergy and bioproducts, uh, this is a subject of great interest. And uh, I must say that in uh, BioN, the first phase of BioN, we overlooked the uh, issues of forest. But now in the second phase, we want to stimulate uh, particularly uh, research in, on the use of forest biomass to produce uh, bioenergy. Next slide, please. Uh, wastes and recycling. There is enormous potential in research on waste and recycling. In the second phase of BioN, we want to stimulate investigation on, on the, this uh, subject. Uh, we want to develop uh, technologies for the use of agricultural uh, residues, uh, mun municipal solids, wastes, sludge, uh, water and nutrient we use in recycling in bioenergy uh, systems. Uh, we want also to investigate the impact of biogas and biomass-based power plants, among other things. And I'd like to call attention here again to uh, the fact that uh, bioenergy, uh, the bioenergy is stored, uh, or the energy of uh, stored uh, in wastes is, is very important. Uh, because uh, the organic molecules of waste have energy, embedded energy, the same way as uh, soybean grains or uh, sugar cane that are used uh, as feedstock for uh, bioenergy. Therefore, we can use wastes uh, to produce bioenergy and bioproducts. And this has uh, many benefits, including environmental and uh, the promotion of a circular economy. And here in the slide, we have examples of biogas being produced uh, with municipal solid wastes, biogas being produced uh, from uh, Vinas, and uh, heat and power being produced with uh, wooden uh, wastes. Therefore, this is a large area of investigation that we want to promote in, in BioN in the next uh, phase. Next slide, please. Uh, next, the other one, please. Next. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, finalizing, uh, we... Uh, we have lots of data available showing that Brazil already has great sustainability indicators for uh, bioenergy. And we can also lead in other sectors of the bioeconomy uh, sectors, such as bioproducts and, and others. Uh, why? Well, we have a competitive industry. We have land and biomass resource to expand bioenergy and uh, to be a leader in the bioeconomy, we have an active scientific community. Uh, and BioN sees that uh, research on sustainability and impacts uh, is fundamental to keep Brazil, uh, to maintain Brazil as, uh, in a leading position in bioenergy and to be a leader also in the bioeconomy. Uh, so uh, thank you.
for your attention and I hand over uh, again to Glaucia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hector. Uh, I will call now for Luis Cassinelli to present opportunities for uh, funding uh, of small uh, businesses and other cooperation with the industry. Thank you, Glaucia. Uh, I will present the opportunities offered for Sao Paulo Research Foundation to finance projects. Next slide, please. Next one, please. Next one. More one. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, it is one of the main agencies for promoting scientific and technological research in Brazil. Sao Paulo Research Foundation is linked to Sao Paulo State Economic Development Secretariat. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, Innovation Research in Small Business Program was created in 1997 and it's designed to support the execution of scientific and technological research in small companies. Uh, the objectives of these programs are support research in, in science and technology uh, as an instrument to promote technological innovation, promote business develop and increase uh, the competitiveness of small companies. Small companies means uh, companies with up to uh, 250 uh, employees. Create uh, conditions to increase the contribution uh, of research for enhancing uh, the economic and social development, induce and increase in private investments in technological research, enable small companies to associate with researchers from, from the academic environment uh, to research projects aimed uh, at technological innovation. Contribute to the formation and development of technological development centers in small companies and to, to the placement of researchers in the business job marketing. The main requirements for companies and projects are summarized in the slide shown. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the project evaluation will be done for more than one external consultant with high uh, knowledge in the subject. The rule changed recently and now it permits the submission throughout the year. Next slide, please. Uh, the main points that proponents should pay attention are the group must have knowledge, but it is not a required master or doctor degree. The, respons the responsibility uh, for the project must dedicate more than 24 hours per week. The projects phase two and phase 2.5 require a business plan and uh, implementation timeline. If a third party show a formal interest in the project with a financial investment, is considered a positive point for approval success. Next slide, please. Uh, the research proposal submit uh, to this program are organized in, into four uh, phases. Phase one, technical scientific feasibility analysis. Phase two, directly and indirectly uh, develop of, of a bench product. Phase 2.5, accelerating the arrival, the arrival of uh, phase two projects to the marketing when there is a third interested part. Phase three, commercial and industrial development of products process, system, and or services. The funds to finance this phase must be obtained from other institutions, such as Desenvolve São Paulo, the National Bank for Economic and Social Development, uh, BNDES, and the Financer of Study uh, and Projects, uh, FINEP. Uh, the projects that were 
financed by innovation researchers in small business program have the technical assessment pre-approved in the case of a request for funds at São Paulo State Financing Agency, Desenvolve São Paulo. A small business program, uh, phase one, I will describe now, uh, uh, I will talk about uh, the details of this phase. Phase one, with an expected dura uh, duration of up to nine months, uh, as in, uh, intent to carry out research on the technical feasibility of the proposed research. The maximum financing amount for seeing for phase one is 200,000 reais, considering all items granted by São Paulo Research Foundation, including technical training, scholarship, and small business research scholarship, except complementary benefits at, and portion for directly infrastructure costs and the, the, of the project. At the end of, the, uh, of uh, nine months, the responsible researcher must submit a final scientific report for phase one. And uh, the accountability of the research invested by Sao Paulo Research Foundation. If there is an uh, interest in submitting uh, the proposal to receive funding in phase two, a scientific progress report may be submitted from the 60 months of uh, phase one onwards. Uh, onwards. Uh, this scientific progress report is in addition to the final scientific report for phase one, which should be presented in any way after the end of phase one on the date established by Sao Paulo Research Foundation. The quality uh, of the results presented in the progress report will be decisive for the qualification for phase two of the program. Uh, now I will talk about uh, phase two. Uh, phase two uh, is uh, for projects that were supported by Sao Paulo Research Foundation in phase one and those interested in submitting the proposal to receive funding in phase two. This is the indirect, the indirect phase one, uh, two uh, uh, that I am talking. Direct phase two. Those interested in supporting research can be submitted the research proposal directly to phase two of the program. In this case, a detailed uh, justification for the no need for phase one must, must be presented with a detailed description of uh, previous research results related to the proposal in question, clearly demonstrating uh, that phase one has already been carried out. Uh, phase two directly and indirectly is expected to last up to 24 months intent uh, for the development for, uh, of the research proposal itself or generation of a pilot sample. The maximum financing amount for a scene for phase two is up to a million reais, considering all the items granted by Sao Paulo Foundation, including the technical training scholarship and the small business research scholarship except for complementary benefits and portion for direct infrastructure projects costs. Uh, the concession can, can be made for, for projects that have demonstrated success in phase one, and the evaluation will give priority to proposal uh, that documents commitment to financial support from any search for the development of phase three or partners active in the market where the product will be uh, sold. In order to receive financing for phase two, the small company will also have to present a business plan uh, for the commercialization uh, of 
new products, process, system, and or services, and describing how the company will obtain the necessary funding for this. Over up to 24 months uh, of phase two, the company must develop and demonstrate to Sao Paulo Research Foundation throughout a, a scientific report the efforts for development uh, of production, commercialization, and financing indispensable, indispensable for entering phase uh, three. Innovative Small Business Program Phase 2.5. Uh, phase 2.5 of Innovative Research or in Small Business Program uh, is a new modality. Uh, launched in October 2020, uh, last month, aims to offer supplementary funds for PIPE Phase 2 projects which have proven success to accelerate the process of commercialization, the innovation developed uh, through the project, demonstrate the ability to attract private investment from a third part, focus on uh, the technological and commercial development uh, of the product, <coughs> process, system, and our services resulting from the research funded by Sao Paulo Research uh, Foundation. I, uh, uh, eligible. Uh, to be eligible for financing under innovative research in small business program phase 2.5, the small company must demonstrate a pre private financial investment from independent third party uh, above uh, 100,000 uh, reais in this case, the small company may submit a proposal to FAPESP with a budget limited to the same private amount, raised, obeying the ceiling uh, of 1 million reais. If the small company demonstrates a private fi financial investment from a third part of 100,000 to 500,000 Sao Paulo Research Foundation, may grant phase 2.5 with a term of, of up to 12 months for the research continuity. If demonstrate a private financial investment by an independent third party from uh, 400,000 and 1 million Sao Paulo Research Foundation may grant phase 2.5 with a term up to 24 months uh, for the continuity of the research. Sao Paulo Research Foundation will contribute, uh, contribute with a, an amount equal to that contributed by the third part. Phase 3. In phase 3, the small company is expected to internally carry out the commercial and industrial development of products, process, system, and or innovative services obtained from previous research carried out by the uh, company without the support of Sao Paulo Research Foundation or from research support within the scope of this program. Uh, the research for phase three must be obtained by the small companies from the market, from the other financing agencies, as previously uh, mentioned. Demonstration, the demonstration of concrete perspectives for the financing of phase three is considering a positive element in the evaluation of proposals for phase one and, and two. Next slide, please. Uh, partnership research for technological innovation is another kind of uh, uh, finance line. The research support program is in partnership for technological innovation is intended to finance research projects in higher education and research institutions, public or private, in private in the state of Sao Paulo, developed 
in cooperation with researchers from companies, research centers located in Brazil or abroad, and co-financed by, by them. The program aims to intensify the relationship between higher education and research institutions and companies throughout cooperative and co-financed research projects. São Paulo Research Foundation finance research at the university or institute on non-refundable basis from 20 to 70 percent. Company contribute to counterpart. This modality uh, has uh, existed uh, since 2006 and several companies of different size and different kind of business already be uh, benefited uh, from this type of financing. Uh, now uh, another kind of uh, uh, line of financing. Engineer Research Center is another one. São Paulo Research Foundation created the special program named Research Innovation and Dissemination Centers that supports long-term research projects to focus on problem solving. These centers should count on the part participation of companies uh, or government entities that are directly linked to society. The São Paulo Research Foundation program of uh, engineering, engineering research centers uses the successful model uh, of the special program research, innovation and dissemination centers and associate with uh, research in partnership for technological innovation shown uh, previously, uh, in which there is a company research co-financing partner, uh, which propose uh, uh, to actively uh, participate in research projects and use the results obtained with the center. The center's plan should develop from the core of internationally competitive research, effective means of technology transfer, education, and knowledge dissemination. The research for the development of the engineer centers will be allocated in the following proportion, 25% for company, 25% for São Paulo Research Foundation and 50% for host institution. In any modality of financing, São Paulo State Foundation and companies jointly define, define the refund amount in the project is successful. The amount returned return can be at most total amount financed. Uh, uh, more details about this uh, can be found in São Paulo Research Foundation site www.fapesp.br. Thank you. Thank you, Cassinelli. Uh, we now uh, open for questions uh, from the audience. Uh, I want to note, yes, okay, we are all back here. Uh, we start the Q&A session. I want to uh, note that everyone can pose a question on the Hoover platform, go to the Q&A on the session. Uh, we have uh, a couple of questions uh, for each of us, and I'm glad that uh, we have uh, enough time. So I'll start by answering uh, one question for me. Uh, is there any database or website in where we can have access to some of those data reported in your presentation? Yes, so uh, several points here. You, After this session, we are going to make available uh, all the slides that we presented here through the Hoover uh, uh, platform uh, as a handout. Okay, so you, you're going to have the PDFs of our slides. You, I, I suggest you also go to the program website, biofapesp.org, 
and uh, look at the goals of the program, which uh, we published there, the, the goals, goals for the next decade, and also to the link for publications. Uh, there uh, we put uh, several recent publications and reports where uh, we got the, the, the numbers, the statistics of production of bioenergy in Brazil uh, for reports uh, with the International Energy Agency. And we also have uh, lots of uh, interesting numbers uh, available from the scope report. Um, another question uh, that was put here is regarding databases. Uh, we have an interest in developing a database that can be used for many different projects uh, for the next decade. We are starting to uh, look uh, exactly what uh, we would like uh, to uh, uh, have there. Uh, this is work in progress, but I think this is an important point. We do need a central database where people can find life cycle inventories, can uh, find data on land use, on sustainability aspects, uh, uh, so we are uh, uh, certainly aware of the need uh, to develop this. We want to have a, a, a synthesis uh, database for the program. Uh, I also want to note that we have a database that uh, is publicly available uh, for all the genomics data, uh, bioinformatics tools to data mine, transcriptome data, metabolomics data, we give support to over 20 labs uh, that are working on sugarcane genomics under the program with many different challenges to sugarcane in field, in greenhouse conditions, uh, with many different stresses. So it's very uh, a very useful depository. Uh, the other question is um, if I can comment on cooperations with other countries that cultivate bioenergy crops since they can benefit from bioen advances in uh, biofuels. Yeah, so uh, FAPESP has many uh, 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 agreements of cooperation uh, with many countries that uh, uh, work on bioeconomy, on bioenergy. Uh, we have, uh, over the last decade, uh, several calls with uh, UK uh, foundations, BBSRC, UK Research Council, would be basic from the Netherlands uh, with Oak Ridge National Laboratories. We have a cooperation with them. FAPESP has a program that's called SPRINT uh, that funds uh, short trips and exchange of researchers uh, to uh, existing projects in both sides. And we also give support uh, as I mentioned, to the International Energy Agency Task Force, uh, Task uh, 39 and Task uh, uh, 45. Task 39 is on commercialization of biofuels and Task 45 is on sustainability in the context of a bioeconomy. There are many countries involved in this effort and in the bio FAPESP, uh, Dot org website, you see our, our uh, publications. We also uh, had cooperations with IRENA that worked uh, uh, to analyze uh, 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 countries in Africa and, Lat uh, and the Caribbean. Uh, and we have a, a current project to analyze emerging markets. It's 20 emerging markets that uh, the BioN program is uh, analyzing to see what is the potential of uh, bioenergy expansion, the pathways, and uh, what are the sustainability uh, indicators that we can uh, use to, to analyze and see uh, uh, the, the, the prospects of these endeavors in these countries. So uh, I will follow now with uh, questions for Heitor uh, Cantarella. Uh, we have two questions uh, for you, Aitor. The first one, uh, you mentioned that one kilogram of nitrogen used as fertilizer generates the equivalent of 10 kilos of CO2. Can you comment on strategies that are being used to reduce this impact? Uh, I think... 
you need to unmute I thought it's still on mute no okay so uh, let's go let's go into questions uh, while we solve this let's go and see if we can hear Rubens can you hear me can you can you come up on screen Rubens is Rubens is Can, can you, okay, I see all of you here. Can we do a general test? Can everybody speak now? <laughs> Hear me? Hello? Yes. Hello? Okay, Orta, okay. So my question is for you now. We, we come back afterwards uh, to see if Aitor is alive again. <laughs> can, 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 have, yeah, I still don't hear you. Eight tours. Sorry, everyone. We go to Orta. Okay, okay. we have several questions here uh, for okay. uh, Orta. Uh, first, uh, what advice would you give to an undergrad student? So this would be master PhD students that are interested in development of technologies in the ethanol hydrogen interface. Can you can you make make an, uh, the other questions? Yes. So to... I'll read I'll read all of them. Okay. The second question: Many European countries are heavily uh, beating on hydrogen with electrolysis from wind and solar energy, where they have a technology advantage, albeit high costs. Besides ethanol, are there other bioenergy sources that could be used? to make cheaper hydrogen? So that was uh, uh, the okay. second question, cheaper hydrogen. Yeah. Then the next, I have another question. The, the other question, do you think that biodiesel will be fastly changed by electricity uh, into, I would say, fastly changed into electricity in cars and buses fleet, for instance. So diesel subs biodiesel substitution by electricity. Okay. okay, you have the word. Thank you, Glaucia. Thank you for those questions. It's really interesting. And as you can see, uh, hydrogen is on the table. No, you are uh, now discussing and exploring and fascinated with the potential of hydrogen. Hydrogen presents two interesting advantages compared with electricity. The conversion in fuel cells can be done on board with advantages and the filling up uh, of the vehicles on the gas stations is very uh, more simple and fast compared with electricity, which requires, uh, requires more time and uh, the cost of batteries, the problem of battery. Well, we have also problems carrying a compressed hydrogen in very high pressures, 700 atmospheres. Anyway, I believe that in the same way that the electricity are coming to stay is, is it's natural to accept that the electrical vehicles are, are in our future. We have a lot of advantages associating electronics and a kind of motors that doesn't need a uh, uh, box of uh, change in the velocities. The load curve of this electrical motor is far better compared with the, the engine. But the point is, where uh, is this, the source of this electricity in the electrical vehicles? Probably will not the grid. That is the question, no? So thanks for the question. And the first question is regarding uh, ethanol, uh, the e-student, a uh, good question, no? What could be uh, interesting topics to study on ethanol to hydrogen? 
Oh, there is a lot of topics, no? Uh, as you know, today we are uh, calling the e-fuels. E-fuels are the fuels that will be produced from these electricity surpluses that are more and more available in some countries in Europe where they uh, have a large capacity, an increasing capacity in wind power and also solar energy. And uh, the dispatch of these uh, power plants is done by God. It's not by the man who said, no, now we we'll put these wind power to operate. No, it depends on the, the, the nature. Is the volatility, volatility is a problem on this. So in some times of during the night where there is no, almost no load in the electrical grid, we could be producing a lot of electricity. And this electricity could be used to produce hydrogen. And one way to use this hydrogen, to store this hydrogen, is to tie this hydrogen in some kind of uh, molecule. And for instance, the ammonia or the ethanol are the usual carriers. Well, if you are developing a system to produce ethanol from electricity and uh, CO2 in the using the, uh, the, atmospheric, the atmospheric gases to produce, why not to produce it and all from the biomass in some condition is more competitive? Because if you are going to use surplus electricity, this surplus to be, to be more correct, it's not absolutely free. Such, such energy should pay some part of the capex of the investment. So, I believe that using some systems that are producing hydrogen from ethanol, either in uh, onboard systems by reform, uh, catalytic reform, or again by catalytic reform in stationary places, in uh, gas stations, or to pump and compress it to use in cars, should deserve a lot of studies. What, what is the, the, the size of this equipment, the cost of this equipment, the conditions to well operate, how, how could be the load curve in, in different situations, different cases, assuming the penetration in different levels of use. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. I think that it is uh, very possible that you are going to introduce faster hydrogen there then we are going to introduce electricity. It's uh, um, fascinating to consider this future, but uh, I do believe that we should explore more this duality of hydrogen and ethanol. There is a lot of synergies uh, on this. Uh, the second question is also, again, uh, uh, again uh, around the hydrogen and these sources of uh, that are using in Europe uh, as wind and solar, which are not uh, dispatchable, are volatile. And in, it seems that uh, in the forthcoming years, the cost of this electricity will be, uh, of course, increased because someone should pay for that. If these, elect these electricity will be considered cheap or very free, someone who are paying or pay more because the load factor will be reduced so i believe that there is some room for uh biofuels in this case the, the are you hearing me okay and yes. and uh, I, I are you hearing me okay it yes, was my, yes. My okay so uh i believe that uh the potential of biofuels sustainable biofuels produced in competitive and sustainable ways is large uh yesterday in the in the discussion of uh the, the opening session of this be best I, I heard, uh, we heard from Fatih Birol uh, saying that uh, bioenergy is the overlooked giant. 
because it's very more important that new fashioned uh, wind and solar. It's easy to demonstrate that. So if competitivity is taken into account, economic competitivity, I think there is room for bioenergy in these contexts. We have uh, uh, other questions about the feedstock. Okay, the feedstock for hydrogen. Uh, I heard some, uh, I saw, in fact, some studies about hydrogen produced from glycerin. As you know, glycerin is a byproduct of biodiesel production, could be used. There is different uh, frontiers to be explored in terms of using this material. Of course, ethanol is, is easier, is cheaper, is very uh, uh, straightforward to introduce in the uh, energy matrix in the transport system. I do believe that there is a large room and I, I, I really don't, don't, underst don't understand why countries that has a large uh, potential for bioenergy producers are interested to use uh, batteries, electric cars. It makes no sense. It makes no sense for me. It makes no economic sense. It makes no environmental sense. The, the lowest emitter, as I showed today, is a flexible hybrid car. If you are really committed to reduce emission, we should introduce this uh, biofuel. If you are really looking for reduce uh, greenhouse gas concentration. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, the question of biodiesel, biodiesel electricity. Again, biodiesel is an, another kind of biofuel, as you know, is not so cheap as ethanol is, but there is also a, a lot of side benefits in using biodiesel compared with electricity. And the, 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 the fact is that we are going to introduce more and more diversity in energy for transport. If you are looking for buses and small distance loads and, and small uh, trucks, maybe there is open uh, space for electricity. But surely for a country as Brazil, considering the large distance and the trucks are moving agro-produce and so on, is very difficult to understand that electricity could play a significant role. It's the role of biodiesel, for sure. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, maybe we could take uh, uh, hours discussing that. It's just short uh, bullets, may I say. Thank you. All very interesting. Uh, I think we may uh, come back to you at the end. I want to go now to Cassinelli. If uh, he is here, can can you speak, Cassinelli? Is everything okay yeah, with your mic? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Great. So I will read all the questions to you, and then uh, we'll, we'll see how you can answer. Uh, the first question, are all the funds in the PIPES, PITES, and engineering centers refundable? Uh, the second question, could you please comment on PIPE and PITE projects, if possible, concerning the main practical limitations to get successful projects? And how would you encourage those willing to apply? And uh, the last one is regarding uh, bio and the, the perspectives of the bio and program. Uh, considering consolidating universities, research institutions, and the industry in the area. How do you think we will be, what are our perspectives in consolidating the interaction between the different players? Okay, I will start with the last one. I think it's easy to, to answer. Uh, uh, there are a lot of new uh, technologies in, uh, uh, in uh, new uh, uh, in new in, in this area of uh, bioproduct, and uh, I think inside the, the universities 
uh, a lot of people are working in development in new technologies to supply the new demand to avoid the oil oil based products i think that uh, is uh, very interesting to join the capacity to finance from uh, state of sao paulo uh, institution with universities and uh, with uh, the, the the companies uh, to to develop the new technology that is uh, i think a way to incentivate uh, to is, uh, speed it up the new technologies. What's the, and the, the next question, uh, Lassa, please? Uh, can, you, can you bring me back on? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. So uh, the, the first question was regarding pitches, pipes, and engineering centers refundable funds. Is it refundable all funds? No, just uh, just the uh, PP is refundable. The uh, the other tools, uh, the the other tools, uh, just uh, the co the counterpart from companies uh, is required. Like uh, uh, the part that company put inside during the the finance project. Okay. So only research in small business can be will have a phase that can be yeah. refundable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, just, just okay. this. And the other one, one is, uh, the, the second question is, uh, it concerns the, uh, how do they get, how to get to a successful project? What are the main practi practical limitations to be successful in a PIPE project? The limited, uh, good questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think <laughs> it's a uh, uh, one million dollars uh, answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think that uh, uh, to be clear uh, uh, during the, the construction of project, I think is is one point uh, to demonstrate the cap uh, capability of group to develop uh, the project, to have a good uh, business uh, case in the case of uh, to uh, request the pipe number two or 2.5. And uh, if he is uh, demonstrate the interest of third part uh, to follow or to join in this program, I think, uh, is a way to prove that the, the the project is accepted for the market. I think that's it, the main points. Uh, thank you, Cassinelli. We now try to go back to Eitor. Eitor, can you speak now? Yes, uh, can you hear okay, me? Okay, good, yes. Okay. okay, so the question, uh, you have two questions here. The first one, you mentioned that one kilo of nitrogen used as fertilizer generates the equivalent of 10 kilos of CO2. Can you comment on strategies that are being used to reduce this impact? And the second question is, uh, since the program is proposing the broadening of our feedstock basis, which do you think are the ones that most quickly could contribute to our matrix? Well, the first question, uh, half of these uh, CO2 emissions come from uh, the industrial phase of uh, fertilizer production. So this is not something that we can uh, work on, but the industry can uh, work on. And, and, and these uh, emissions uh, come from the use of natural grass, uh, gas to produce ammonia. Uh, it generates a lot of uh, CO2. Uh, the industry is working on, on solutions for that, uh, improving uh, procedures. And there's also a new thing going on is the uh, what's called green ammonia. 
So instead of using natural gas, the industry is uh, working on uh, using uh, electrolysis from wind or solar sources to produce uh, hydrogen. And then uh, this could decrease the CO2 uh, footprint of fertilizer from the industry uh, side. From our side, we can improve fertilizer use efficiency uh, in the soil. Uh, producing more biomass bio with the same amount of uh, nitrogen. And also, we can uh, make use of uh, some additives such as uh, nitrification inhibitors that reduces the nitrous oxide emission when nitrogen uh, fertilizers are applied to the soil. So there are several solutions. I'd say that, that the most practical is to increase the uh, efficiency of uh, nitrogen use in the agriculture. Uh, and perhaps uh, the use of uh, nitrification inhibitors, but uh, there are so uh, different fronts uh, to tackle this problem. Well, uh, the, uh, the the second question about uh, the feedstock to increase rapidly uh, uh, the bioenergy production. I think we are very well with sugarcane. Uh, we are progressing, sugarcane uh, production and ethanol production will increase. We have second generation uh, ahead of us also. Uh, we are doing well with uh, biodiesel, but I think one of the untapped sources of energy that we are not using here in Brazil is uh, wastes. We have uh, municipal solid wastes that can be transformed in biogas. We have uh, VINAS, for instance, uh, residue of the uh, ethanol production. We, we, we have uh, huge amounts of VINAS that uh, today uh, they are, uh, VINAS is used as fertilizer, but before that we can make biogas and still use it as fertilizer. So I, I think there are uh, several options. Wood, we, uh, I think we, can, we have very good produce, uh, conditions to increase the production of uh, wood to generate uh, bioenergy in several, uh, in several ways. So I think uh, we have very good opportunities here in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, to increase uh, bioenergy using different uh, feedstocks. Okay. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Heitor. Uh, we now go to Rubens. Uh, Rubens, uh, can you comment on how can biorefineries compete in the low oil fuels economy? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. That's a quite interesting point. And I believe that uh, that's a, a point that you have to face away for time now. Once that uh, we are going to have oil for a long time, and as uh, biofuels or new kinds of fuel for transportation is going to be used, we expect to have uh, oil to be used in different ways. And then it can be for the petrochemical is one option. How it then can the biomass compete with that? I think uh, if you look for the potential of biomass to produce new chemicals, and if, uh, for particular uh, use as in the biomedical area, cosmetic area, and some specific points that you cannot do with the oil-based uh, chemicals. You can have a very large read of opportunities to work with the renewable material and feedstocks to produce bio-based chemicals, especially in the area of the uh, for application to the health areas, as well as uh, in some uh, kind of application that uh, we are not able to do with the uh, oil-based chemicals. For instance, uh, sometimes uh, some of the building blocks, uh, organic acids, come from, from oil, they have the, you cannot control the, uh, the isomers, and then you have no control on the, uh, some any of use chemical or physical properties of the material. You can do this in very sustainable way using bio, Based chemicals. Then that's going to be a point that the biorefinery is going to be uh, very, very attractive and very strong uh, 
as uh, in business area, not only because it's green, but because it's offered the, 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 the possibility to be sustainable and also to provide chemicals that are not possible to be done using the oil-based chemicals. Okay, uh, thank you, Rubens. Uh, we now have a couple of questions that I think, well, there is one question here that uh, was for Rubens, but I think I can comment. Uh, it is uh, regarding research to develop sensors to monitor and control uh, biofuels production. I want again uh, to ask you to look into the list of uh, startups that we have in the bioenfapes.org site. If you go to the research link, we have uh, uh, the list of uh, 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 RISP, Research and Small Business there, and uh, half of them maybe are on the agronomical side. There's a lot of research uh, on uh, uh, sensors for agriculture. Uh, they uh, go uh, uh, um, they 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 are uh, uh, they are they are deploy, being deployed in uh, to solve many uh, different uh, uh, questions in the field in the mills we have artificial intelligence uh, we have biosensors to detect contaminants not in, only for biofuels for cachaça uh, as well we have uh, um, uh, a lot of uh, um, in, uh, computation uh, and uh, informatics initiatives to speed up, decrease uh, uh, costs and improve efficiencies in the whole process. So this area of sensors and artificial intelligence uh, is really uh, an area that is um, uh, in, uh, increasing a lot of uh, the, the uh, modernizing a lot our uh, bioenergy uh, field. Uh, I want uh, also to give the word uh, once again to all members uh, to comment on one question that uh, uh, was put here, which is what is the biggest barrier to the implementation of new technologies in the Brazilian agroenergetic sector. And I want to start by mentioning that uh, one of the aspects that we felt uh, was really hindering our efforts in uh, um, transforming uh, science in the lab into solutions in the industry is communication. Uh, we have been working with FIESP and we have been working with this, uh, with the niches, with the nuclei for uh, uh, transfer of in, uh, innovation of technologies to the industry that we have in each university. And call your attention that we will have a session on this uh, on the next uh, BBES conference, a session to discuss specifically uh, this theme with the niches from USP, Unicamp, UNESP, UFSCar in a session moderated by uh, uh, FIESP uh, from uh, Consaúde. So we are aware of this being a great uh, 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 challenge and uh, I'll pass now the word to my colleagues to comment on challenges that uh, we uh, may have to address what is your feeling, what are your views on the barriers for technological implementation of solutions that we may uh, arrive in the BioN program. So first, uh, can I give the word back to Rubens? Yes, uh, that's a quite interesting point. I do believe that uh, we have to, to open our mind uh, because many of the opportunities that you have in the bio-based chemicals using the bio-refinery or biofuels, uh, sometimes they conflict in, terms of, uh, in economic terms of, the, of uh, regular products coming from oil or a not not renewable source. The point is, the society is not going to pay more only because it's cleaner or because it's greener. 
Uh, so the point is, is to develop a stable process that can be both good for the environment as well as a, a good business in the, in the economic point of view. And this is not difficult to do with the price of the, uh, the, the potential of the agribusiness in Brazil, especially sugar cane, uh, soya bean, uh, corn now, and the eucalyptus, and the urban waste, uh, uh, solid urban waste, as Eitor mentioned, that we, we are uh, not doing a lot of things in this, in this direction. The point is that we have to put in our mind that you have uh, uh, the, the potential, but not only the potential because it's because it's cleaner or greener, but also because we have a very competitive price and technology with this long years of research in bio and program to be implemented industrially and the PIPE program, the PP program that Professor uh, Cassinelli mentioned that is one of the windows that can see how you can move from science to the technology. And the, the point is Brazil has all the conditions to transform the biomass in more value products than you are doing now, maybe exporting too much and they don't add values to this produce, to, the, to, to this, let's say, feedstock that we have here. Even the agribusiness residuals that are strong in uh, uh, biomass, uh, they are very low price comparatively, and then the technology is not the uh, buy here anymore. But the only thing I see that we have to explore this opportunity and with new products that are not to be faced with the to, to be comparable with the oil-based uh, chemicals. Let's turn the word to Glaucia. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Otta, do you want to uh, comment? Yes, uh, thanks for th this very challenging question. Maybe it's the, one of the most important questions. Okay, uh, it's not just a question of producing uh, knowledge and data, but how to apply the conditions to uh, reach the market in good conditions. Uh, in many aspects, biomass production is very site specific, as you know, depending on the climate, the, the rainfall, the soil. Okay, we, we have a large potential, not only in Brazil, in Africa, in other uh, neighbor countries here in Latin America, a large potential to produce in biomass. And also related to the production of biomass is a little bit site-specific conditions to push uh, systems to convert this biomass in bioproducts and biofuels and electricity. But why this large potential is still underdeveloped. Why we are accepting some models for other countries? Because in the case, for instance, in the transport, this is very clear, the schemes, the market constraints are defined not just in our, inside our frontiers. It came from abroad. Okay, the design of the, the vehicles, the, the technology uh, more push it more, evaluate it, not maybe our option. So I believe that as uh, Glaucia start mentioning the communication, okay, in fact, you are producing a lot of information. We need to diffuse more, to convince more people. But in some sense, I think that one important barrier is in the case of Brazil, for instance, the limitation of our internal market regarding the potential of implementing that, this technology effectively abroad where these um, bioenergy, sustainable bioenergy schemes should be also pushed, should be also promoted. So I think that uh, one barrier to be overcome is the barrier of the dialogue that we need to promote more integration, more discussion. So uh, in BioN, we are committed to do that. We are uh, participating in some uh, 
some commissions in uh, International Energy Agency. We are in GBEP, in FAO. We are trying to uh, help BioFuture platform to go ahead to convince, okay, guys, electrical vehicles is so important. Uh, other modern, may I say, uh, modern power uh, generation schemes is very interesting, but as uh, EIA, Edith Biro said, uh, bioenergy is the overlooked giant. You have an enormous potential untapped, and we need to show this in other markets, reach more uh, balanced condition to push this. I said today that these our uh, the, the vehicles in our roads today, the Corolla hybrid flex fuel is the lowest by far, the lowest emission car over the over the world. There is any other car emitting so low amount of GAG gases. Why this is not uh, in news in other in other roads, in other seas, in other uh, streets? Well, there is a. a, a lack of information, there is some barriers, there is some uh, prejudice in many cases. We, we know how difficult it is still today to convince people that producing bioenergy doesn't alarm uh, food production, there is no slaves working in bioenergy production. So it's a kind of information to diffuse that it's possible to produce sustainably, competitively, bioenergy. It makes sense. It's good not just for Brazilian. It's good for mankind. Just Brazil is not able to make the revolution of bioenergy. We do need to spread this good idea in our uh, neighbors in Africa and also in developing countries. They are absolutely interested to do that if they could understand the real advantage behind this energy source. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, now we give the word to Cassinelli. Can you talk about the yeah. biggest barrier to the implementation okay. of okay. new technologies? Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for, for all. Uh, I think that a way to in, uh, grow, make grow a country is investing in technology. Uh, here in Brazil, we have uh, good opportunities to, to develop uh, bioenergy from uh, sugarcane, from other kinds of, of cultures. And uh, uh, we have uh, the support from FAPESP. I would like to incentivate to use the three funds that uh, I show, shown before, uh, Innovative Research in Small Business Program, Partnership uh, uh, Research in Technological Innovation Engineer uh, Reward Center, uh, Research Center. Uh, I, I would like to incentivate companies and uh, researchers to use this kind of fund. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Wonderful. Eitor. Yeah, uh, this is an interesting uh, theme. Uh, we must say that not all research that we do in, 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 in bioenergy is uh, disruptive. Many times uh, we do uh, research that gives incremental uh, results. Uh, we add to the knowledge that is available. Uh, this is the case for much of the research in agronomy, for instance, or uh, in uh, sustainability, yeah, you, you cannot uh, create a, a new company or a startup uh, for that. So uh, how do we implement this? With extension, good extension and good communication, as you said uh, before. But uh, there are lots of things that we do at the lab or at the field scale that uh, are disruptive, are new and can be uh, transformed uh, into new businesses. Uh, and I think uh, the bottleneck uh, here, I'd say that's education, because uh, our generation uh, has been uh, trained to produce science and not look at uh, the business size, side uh, uh, of uh, what we produce. So we 
tend to uh, replicate it with our students. And so we have to have a, a new uh, mindset and to educate our students uh, to the fact that uh, they have an opportunity and they must, uh, when they start to work on their research uh, programs, to, from the beginning, uh, try to see the opportunities to develop new things and to start a new business. I think this is an important aspect, I'd say, uh, education, to train the students and the new generation to think differently. That's what I, uh, I, I'd say is one important bottleneck in addition to the others that uh, our colleagues uh, have commented on. Thank you, Heitor. And uh, just to finish this topic, Rubens, there is one specific question on barriers for technology, uh, technological development uh, here that regards 2G, advanced biofuels, lignocellulosic biofuels. Uh, can you comment on the status of this and what are the barriers that we still have to uh, evolve? Through? Yes, uh, that's a good point because uh, I don't think this that is not scientific barrier anymore. Some of part of the process, uh, like the pretreatment, uh, suffer it at the beginning of the let's say the first plant some technological problem to deal with the uh, behavior of the sugar cane bagasse. Uh, in terms of uh, the hydrodynamics of it, uh, using in the pretreatment that would led to, to use a lower amount of solid at the beginning, and uh, this has been solved. Let's say that you can use now a, a higher, much higher load of solid, uh, higher than 20, 25 uh, percent compared to have at the beginning. Secondly, we have already the uh, good the domine of the process itself to uh, the fermentation to go from ethanol uh, uh, from these uh, hemicellulose fractions, and you can have the process itself splitting the two streams that you can go to the uh, catalytic acid hydrolysis process, then you have the C6 fraction that you can mix up with the, the uh, sugar can juice and then go to conventional process. So the process has already been solved in terms of its scientific and technological point. The, the, I believe that the, it is a, a part of the process, it's a learning curve, that the processes, the cost is, is going tends to decrease with time with the new plants that are coming, and then this is become more attractive because we increase the number of plants, then we increase the amount of enzymes to be produced to be used, and then it's natural to have a learning curve that leads to to decrease or to decrease significantly the price. This happens with the, the first generation ethanol. And for sure, it's a matter of time that you're going to have the second G ethanol uh, at your hands to be very, very competitive and to add into the first generation ethanol to uh, become the market more, let's say, available for in terms of ethanol production. And also, I would like just to, to, to add it to that, that the uh, corn based process that it has been introduced in the central part of Brazil, it's going to help in this direction because you increase the, the, the use, uh, the period of the distinction, uh, production period of the plant. And the, if you see the process when we use the sugar cane, ethanol, uh, and then we use the corn uh, based ethanol, which is very slight modification, you can go to second G use the more or less the same infrastructure. The point is the pretreatment, if it's well done, can be used in the, in the sugarcane plant, the first generation with sugarcane ethanol, as well as in the corn-based ethanol. So we, uh, I saw a bright fruit, uh, I see a uh, bright future for the second G in Brazil, and the scientific and technological point has been overcome already. Okay, thank you. Uh, and now I answer one question here regarding plans and desires for, for international uh, collaborations. 
Uh, I quickly mentioned one study that we are doing, collaboration with several countries, including uh, uh, India and uh, Germany, uh, to study emerging markets. So uh, this uh, uh, we are organizing uh, to uh, uh, meet the, the 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 goals of this initiative uh, work groups. Uh, uh, BioN, since its beginning, has organized work groups when we face uh, those big challenges, such as it was when we decided to sequence the sugarcane uh, genome. We started organizing a work group and inviting countries that were working on this field and some countries that were not working but had experience with crops to join us and define what were the best challenges. We also organized a, a work group on cellulosic ethanol many years ago. It, uh, 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 it made uh, possible uh, to uh, 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 seek for large funds, so we were able to fund several projects, including our National Science and Technology uh, Center, INS, INCT, for cellulosic ethanol. We had the Seprobio project uh, together with groups from the UK. Uh, we had a, a Horizon uh, project, Horizon 2020, that was also derived from initiatives such as the organizing of these work groups. And we welcome uh, 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 partners that want to join us. Uh, we will seek, of course, uh, new partners. And uh, we I have to tell you, we are very busy with the BioM program nowadays, establishing all these uh, collaborations, gathering data, and trying to uh, uh, do our job in uh, increasing the impact of our publications. So uh, these activities are very important for us because uh, it increases our opportunities for dissemination of the lessons learned, of the good practices, of our good experience, and this learning curve that we have already uh, went through, uh, 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 we have gone through for so uh, uh, many years. And to finish, I want to uh, uh, answer one question here is, uh, the question is if uh, Brazil is uh, aware of, um, if, if we think that people in Brazil in general uh, are aware of our, of how clean our energy matrix is. And how important is this for the entire world as an example? I have to again uh, mention Paolo Frankel and Fatih Biro, who yesterday gave excellent top, uh, talks on this topic. Uh, bioenergy is still considered the overlooked giant, not only in Brazil, but in several countries. We have been using biomass for bioenergy for millennia. Uh, millions of years, but uh, more recently we have evolved these technologies and we are using it at high efficiency, better efficiencies and uh, uh, more uh, economically compatible every year. It's incredible how much technology we have developed over the last decade. So we have to keep uh, talking about it and um, the answer is no. I don't think the population is aware of uh, the riches that we have in this field and all the uh, innovations and uh, all the results that we have, the good science, but we are trying to, uh, through BeBest and through other initi initiatives such as the BioFuture platform, our partner in this uh, conference, uh, to talk about it, to uh, uh, let people know that uh, we are in a good uh, trajectory. Thank you very much. I think we are reaching the end uh, of our uh, uh, webinar here. Uh, I will, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, post uh, uh, some links in Hoover for specific questions that were made. And you will also have uh, available uh, the slides from our presentations. Uh, Please vi visit bioenfapes.org, our Facebook page. We are always putting news on papers and technologies that are derived uh, from the program on the web. And I want to finish by thanking uh, Hector Cantarella, uh, 
Rubens Maciel, uh, Ota Nogueira, and Luis Cassinelli, and also uh, the backend team that helped uh, us put together uh, this webinar and uh, all the sponsors of this conference. Thank you very much. Quem tem uma empresa sabe quanto tempo é valioso. Por isso, a Pets Brasil apoia empresas brasileiras que querem exportar seus produtos, atrair investimentos estrangeiros ou empreender no exterior. Com a Pets Brasil, as empresas brasileiras têm um apoio estratégico para mandar seus produtos e serviços para fora do país de uma forma inteligente e segura. Com métodos inovadores, parcerias, soluções inteligentes, visão de mercado, conteúdos estratégicos e muita qualificação. A Apex Brasil é referência na promoção de exportações, internacionalização de empresas e atração de investimentos estrangeiros. A agência também atua de forma coordenada com atores públicos e privados em setores estratégicos, tanto para o desenvolvimento da competitividade das empresas quanto para o fortalecimento da economia brasileira. Se é conexão com o um mundo de oportunidades no mercado internacional que a sua empresa procura, é o apoio da Apex Brasil que ela precisa. Acesse o mundo. Acesse a Apex Brasil. Quem tem uma empresa sabe quanto tempo é valioso. Por isso, a Apex Brasil apoia empresas brasileiras que querem exportar seus produtos, atrair investimentos estrangeiros ou empreender no exterior. Com a Apex Brasil, as empresas brasileiras têm um apoio estratégico para mandar seus produtos e serviços para fora do país de uma forma inteligente e segura. Com métodos inovadores, parcerias, soluções inteligentes, visão de mercado, conteúdos estratégicos e muita qualificação. A Apex Brasil é referência na promoção de exportações, internacionalização de empresas e atração de investimentos estrangeiros. A agência também atua de forma coordenada com atores públicos e privados em setores estratégicos, tanto para o desenvolvimento da competitividade das empresas quanto para o fortalecimento da economia brasileira. Se é conexão com o mundo de oportunidades no mercado internacional que a sua empresa procura, é o apoio da Apex Brasil que ela precisa. Acesse o mundo. Acesse Apex Brasil.